Oh, oh Chris, I don't know if it's the new fear or the wine, but there's something going on between us. <laughs> hey, good day everybody, and welcome to another Go with the Flow video. How's it going? Or oh, like the great big C would say, what are you at? What are you at? How's you going, buddy? What are you at today? What are you at? How's you going, buddy? What are you at today? It was early June, and we're just done working on converting our van into a minivan. It was the perfect time to go on a trip across Canada, and we decided to start by exploring the easternmost province of Canada, the island of Newfoundland also known as the Rock. We booked a ferry trip departing from Sydney, which is the closest land from the island. Oh, wait, not this Sydney. This one over here. Be careful when you book a flight to check for Sydney, Nova Scotia, NS, and not NSW, or you end up in New South Wales, Australia. After seven hours on the ferry, we arrived to the town of Chanel Porobasque. From there, we drove from the west coast to the east coast, exploring and discovering along the way for about two weeks and around 1,600 kilometers. By the way, did you notice that Nova Scotia and Newfoundland kind of shape like the two islands of New Zealand? Anyway, that's not the topic of the video. When I think of Newfoundland, I think of the ocean, the land and the people. Originally settled by First Nations, then visited by Vikings, the Europeans called it the Newfoundland, and its abundance of codfish attracted fishermen for centuries. The product of British, Irish, French, and First Nation heritage is what makes the island today. Our first destination, Chanel Porobasque, the ferry gateway to the island and your first breath of fresh Newfie air. During the 16th century, it was the favorite shelter and watering place for Basque whalers from the Basque region of the Pyrenees between France and Spain. The Grand Bay West Beach Trailway takes you for a good walk along the shoreline and is an ideal spot for the sunset. to St. George Bay, also known as Westwick in the Mi'kmaq language, meaning the end of the island. The French had their seasonal fishing station to catch cod, and some decided to settle and live here, despite a British law against permanent settlement. Several wars broke out between France and England, and treaties would allow the French to only fish on designated shores, until the British claimed the island and granted the French the islands of St. Pierre and Miquelon compensate for the loss of Cape Breton in Nova Scotia. If like us you want to cut it a day, I truly recommend going to the Bay of Islands. You can stay at a copper mine trails parking spot for the night and have a relaxed evening walking to the falls and enjoying the golden hour watching the changes of colors.
Less than 15 minutes away from the Bay of Islands, there's the Blomidan Provincial Park. Don't ask me why it's called like that, I'm not quite sure. I think it's just so windy sometimes that it will blow you down. And not far from there, there's another little place called Bottle Cove. Apparently, it would be an anglicization of the French word for boat, bateau. Later turned into bottle, I don't know, maybe they couldn't pronounce bateau properly. Welcome to Bottle Cove. En route to one of the two national parks on the island, Rossmore National Park, 185,500 hectares, a UNESCO World Heritage Site established as a national park in 1973. We're gonna spend the night by the lake, have a rest and get ready to do some hike tomorrow. Oh yeah, now she's working here. Yeah. Rossmore National Park is popular for its vast dense forest, its rugged terrain, its fjordlands and tablelands. If you're lucky enough, you might spot some animals like moose and caribou. Watch out for some on the roads. Go to the visitor center if you wish to get more information about the hikes in the area. And if you want to visit the Western Brook Pond, book your boat tour in advance. You wouldn't believe it, but in Newfoundland, they have carnivorous plants too. <laughs> Look at those babies. Got a picture plant. That's right, the picture plant, the carnivorous wetland plant of the island, and the flower emblem of Newfoundland and Labrador since 1954. It was chosen by Queen Victoria to be engraved on the Newfoundland and Labrador penny. Western Brook Pond or a tadpole with a dude face. Uh, I'm a tadpole. From the parking lot, it's a 45 minute walk to the boat. Western Brook is the best place to explore those striking cliffs. It's a stunning glacier-carved landlocked fjord with plunging waterfalls.
my favorite hiking trail in the whole of Newfoundland. Named after Sir Alexander Murray, who produced the first geological maps of Newfoundland. It's an amazing trail. You go through mossy land, walk on boardwalks, and see some wonderful waterfalls. Two thousand two hundred stairs going up and down. Yet sometimes a bit challenging, but it's really rewarding and fun. Our next step, Dildo Run Provincial Park. Welcome to Dildo! Hey! Yeah, you heard me. Dildo Run. There's a town of Dildo and the provincial park of Dildo Run. No one seems to know exactly the origin of the name. Could it be Captain Dildo? Could it be the translation of a French word or a Spanish word? No one really knows. Dildo it is. Twillingate, the iceberg capital of the world, one of the best locations for admiring these gigantic ice cubes that break off the ice cap in Greenland. <laughs> one of them even sunk the Titanic. We waited and stayed at a free camp on the coast but didn't see any. Not a single iceberg at the horizon, Captain. But I really enjoyed the camp and was even inspired for cooking crepes. If you don't see any icebergs, you can at least taste them. En route to the winery, my friends. There was once a bird named the Great Oak living on the island, but it went extinct. 
Now it's the name of this winery making wines from Newfoundland berries like the partridge berries, cloud berries, low bush blueberries, black currants and even from iceberg water. And if you want to be a real Newfie, you're gonna have to kiss the code and repeat some Newfie slang. Oh Chris, I don't know if it's the Newfie air or the wine, but there's something going on between us. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, you're a newbie. <laughs> the Rock has not always had a strong British, Irish and French culture. In fact, indigenous people lived there for a long time. These maps illustrate the evidence of sites once occupied by different groups. The Maritime Archaic, a Grosswater Paleo Eskimo, the Dorset Paleo Eskimo and Pre-Contact Biotic, the Biotic people and the arrival of Europeans. This site in Boyd's Cove was a Beothic village. The interpretive center displays archaeological findings and attempts to reimagine the life of this now culturally extinct people living here 300 years ago. It is believed that the Beothic culture died with Shanaditit on June 6, 1829. There are many fishing towns in Newfoundland, and all charming in their own ways. We decided to stop at this one, the town of Salvage. And if you like to hike between bedrock and rugged land, try the Salvage Trails. Our next stop, the Terra Nova National Park, 400 square kilometers, the second national park on the island and the most easterly national park in Canada. Short and long trails are available. It's also a good place for kayaking. And if you stay overnight and enjoy stargazing, the park is also a dark sky preserve. Drive an hour and a half away from the national park and you'll reach the Bonavista Peninsula. Here are some of the best things to see in the area. Starting with one of the most photographed places in Newfoundland, the Lighthouse. Built in 1843, the red and white striped lighthouse at Cape Bonavista is a must to visit. They operated until 1962 and is now a provincial museum. A nice way to get there from the town is by the Cape Shore Trail, where you can also see wooden platforms used for drying salt cod in the wind and sun. Dungeon Provincial Park. Thousands of years of constant erosion created these impressive collapsed sea caves. The town of Bonavista. Rich in history. It was named after John Cabot's exclamation when he saw the land at this site on June 24, 1497, during his voyage of discovery to Newfoundland in his 65 foot ship called the Matthew. For Cabot's 500th anniversary in 1997, a modern-day replica of the Matthew was built and kept at the Matthew Legacy Museum. An interesting museum with lots of information about the journey of the explorer and his crew. John who? Well, his name was Giovanni Caboto, and he was an Italian navigator and explorer. moved with his family to England in 1495 and was commissioned by King Henry VII to voyage in search of unknown lands. He left with a crew of 18 men from Bristol, England and went across the Atlantic for six weeks before reaching the New World. Matey. 
Can you imagine? No? Well, it's easy if you try. He would have made his first landfall in Newfoundland in 1497, and when spotting the land, he said in Italian, Oh, buon vista! Meaning, oh, happy sight, which later became the name of the town, Buena Vista. The other attraction on the peninsula is the Puffin viewing site in Elliston, also named sea parrots, those tiny birds can be spotted on this island. I thought they were big like penguins, but no, they're usually the size of a beer bottle. Can you see them? Just over there. Look! Talking about beer, if you go to Port Rexton, check out the brewery. Beer and atmosphere, fantastic. Still in Port Rexton, there's another trail that I really like. It's a moderate loop coastal trail about 5 kilometers, the Skirwing Trail. the Avalon Peninsula. Our first stop is the picturesque fishing town of Kidividi. Again, no one has a clue about the origin of the name. There are many stories. It could come from the French, the English, the Italian, Portuguese or even Latin. In the early 90s, the population of cut fish fell to a critical 1%, mostly due to overfishing. The Canadian government shut the cut industry down indefinitely in July 1992, putting 30,000 people in Newfoundland out of work. This old fish plant was converted into a brewery and today is the largest craft brewery in the province. We are now arriving in St. John's, capital and largest city of the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. But first, we're gonna have a look at the Signal Hill National Historic Site. Dominating the surrounding area between St. John's Bay and St. John's Harbor, the steep hill named Signal Hill has been a military site since the 17th century, important for defense and communication. French and British forces fought for it many times. The British seized it during the last battle of the North American theater of the Seven Years' War on September 15, 1762. You can learn more at the Interpretive Center. The Cabot Tower was built in 1898 to commemorate the 400th anniversary of Jan Cabot and Queen Victoria's Diamond Jubilee. Primarily used by the British military for flag signaling, a signal man would indicate by flag the type of ship spotted to the other men in town. And in 1901, the Italian electrical engineer Guglielmo Marconi received the first transatlantic wireless message in Morse code sent from the United Kingdom. Bye. 
We drove south of St. John's on the Irish Loop. This was our last experience on the island before taking the ferry back to the mainland. Whitless Bay and Bay Bowls are known for their whale watching boat tours. Take a boat and see the humpback whales and minke whales, but also seabirds and icebergs depending on the season. We headed straight to Torres Cove and its provincial park, La Manche, meaning the sleeve in French. The park has a nice waterfall, pleasant easy trails in the woods and a suspension bridge leading to an abandoned village. La Manche got its name from French sailors visiting the cove to hide from English ships raiding St. John's and Ferryland in the 17th century. Then settled around 1840 and the community there grew to 54 people with 13 houses and even a church. Because of the rocky terrain, space to build was limited. Homes were nestled on the side of hills and connected by wooden bridges. By the 1960s, only 25 people remained. January 25, 1966, a terrible winter storm hit the coast and washed the village away, forcing people to relocate and abandon the place. A new suspension bridge was built here in 1999. Only foundations and rock walls can be seen. Ferryland was used as a station by French, Spanish and Portuguese fishermen in the 16th century. Later claimed by England and attacked by the Dutch in the 1660s, it was destroyed by New France in 1696. If you have a good car, you can drive down to Cape Race and check out the nearby wireless station that received a distress signal from the RMS Titanic in 1912. At the edge of the Avalon, Portugal Cove and the Mystican Point UNESCO World Heritage, where you'll find the world's largest and oldest collection of marine fossils locked away in stone for over 565 million years. Guided tours are available if you want to see the fossils on the cliffs. You'll also find information about the history of Cape Race and Mistaken Point. Mistaken Point got its name from the many sailors who mistakenly believed they had reached Cape Race. They would turn north, thinking they were entering the harbor, but instead would crash into the rocky cliffs, leading to over a hundred shipwrecks. Cape Race has a direct link with the sinking of the Titanic. The Marconi station at Cape Race was the first land station to answer the distress call. Trepassi, another cute new fee fishing community, but with a special place in aviation history. On June 5, 1928, Amelia Earhart arrived on board the French ship, the Fokker F7. The French ship circled Trepassi twice before putting down on the choppy water of the harbor. When the weather cleared, her and the crew took off for Burryport, Wales, on June 17, 1928, which made her the first woman to fly across the Atlantic as a passenger. She would go on to set many records as a pilot. We finished this trip by visiting the Salmonier Nature Park, a center for environmental education, but also a wildlife rehabilitation place. Animals are brought to the park for care and, when possible, return to the wild. Like a bird on a tree, I'm just sitting here 
I got time It's clear to see From up here The world seems small We can sit together It's so beautiful You and me We meant to be Outdoors, forever free. Tadpole.